The Four of Cups is known as luxury, and this may seem somewhat contradictory at first when we examine the imbalance present in this card, and yet its meaning should become clear as we examine its symbology. On the Ride Away card, we can see a character of whom looks unfulfilled. They are peering at the cups in front of them, almost becoming indifferent towards them, so much so that they are unaware or unappreciative of the cup being offered to them from the universe. On the Tree of Life, this card is connected with the Sephirot of Chesed, of which is the fourth upon the Tree of Life, and indeed is the beginning of manifestation. And so it is the central Sephiroth on the Pillar of Mercy, of which is directly under Shokmar. And so here, the form of which originated in Binar on the previous card has been born. And this Chesed Sephiroth is often translated as loving kindness. And it can even be an overflowing of uh, kindness, an overflowing of mercy and generosity, and therefore luxury. And yet, of course, an overflowing especially when we consider the heavy water element in this card, can represent a tipping of a balance or an unbalance present in the card. We can see that the card represents moon in Cancer, and the moon is of course always associated with endless change and things being in flux, especially when we see its influence over the seas and the waters and the ever-shifting waves of our world. And so the moon in Cancer, especially when associated with she said, we've got this excessive amount of water here, which means that that potential really can be tipped too far to one side or endlessly in flux so much that things become imbalanced. And so it could show that perhaps the drawer of this card has a deep need to be fulfilled emotionally and spiritually, and yet they don't know how to and they go about it the wrong way. And so they may attempt to cling to these things of luxury, these things of the world of which are prone to an endless cycle of changing. And so perhaps this could explain why some people seem to have all manner of wonderful wealth and beautiful things of the earth and yet they are still spiritually and emotionally unfulfilled and they've got all this stuff around them that they don't need or that doesn't mean anything to them. And so we can see that the card is very much watery. In fact, every element and every attribute of the card is associated with water. Even Chesed, of which we can see on the card as the four cups shaped into the form of a square, of which represents the square or the four of Chesed. And this Sephiroth is ruled by Jupiter, of whom has a brother, Poseidon. These could also be Zeus and Neptune. And Neptune or Poseidon the brother of Jupiter is, of course, a god of the sea, and so we have the first watery symbol coming on there. And, as we have discussed, Chesed is on the Sphere of Mercy upon the Tree of Life. It's the highest of the spheres below the Abyss, and it's in the section of the Tree of Life, uh, of which is known as the World of Bria, up in the Kabbalistic theology. And the World of Bria has a connection with the letter He of the Tetragrammaton, of which connects to the suit of cups, and yet again, the element of water. The card being the moon and Cancer are both watery symbols. The moon, of course, controls the tide and is concerned with the endless ebb and flow of the waves and the notion of time in our physical world, the tides coming out and in, in an endless cycle. And, of course, the astrological sign of Cancer is one of the water signs. It is very intuitive and also maybe a type of surface level water if we're looking at it in terms of metaphor. And so it could be the water of which laps at the coastline and touches the sand, therefore mixing with the creatures of the sea and the things of the land. And so it's coming in to that physical manifestation, such as what we saw with Shesed and the rest of the symbols upon this card. Indeed, if we have a look at the actual cups, uh, we look at the lower cups first here. They have square bases upon them, and these represent a type of stability, of which may, in one interpretation, bring us back yet again to Chesed, of which is associated with a stable energy. And yet, if we have a look at the actual symbol on the card, the bases have no actual 
foundation, they seem to be floating upon this ocean in flux. And so this shows that there is an inherent, unstable nature to this card. These cups are prone, of course, to shifting and moving about, uh, of which would disturb the water within them, of course, and create ripples and waves inside of it. The sea itself, as we can see, uh, is different here. It is darker for a start, uh, and it has a lot of waves showing in it, of which were not present in the previous cards. And so we can see the influence of the moon there uh, changing the tides, and also that these are rougher seas, and therefore if we were a sailor in a ship in rough seas, we would be more alert to dangers moving on around us and the possibility of the winds changing direction uh, and all sorts of rogue waves and things like that so we would be acutely aware of a change in the actual weather physically around us and in the card of course this relates to the emotional mind and the world of the heart however if we look below these cups and in the very center of the sea upon the card there is uh, an Ouroboros or an infinity sign which is almost hidden amongst uh, these symbols at the bottom of which are said to be the roots or the stems of the lotuses coming up uh, through the centre of the card. And this is quite difficult to see and yet it is there right in the centre of the actual card. And so this shows that despite these shifting seas and the possibility of ripples and waves and all manner of unknowns, that we still have that infinite love and that infinite potential to come out of this situation deeply in the centre of everything and so it's within our very heart and so despite the endless passage of change there is still a type of stability and there is still the infinite potential to take hold of a situation and to change the course of the ship upon the rough waves so that it indeed reaches its destination without being destroyed and ravaged by the waves a particularly interesting symbol upon this card is that we can see that the top two cups are still receiving this beautiful white light and flowing of kether and of uh, water of creation into them and they're overflowing such as we have seen on the previous cards and yet the bottom two cups don't overflow anymore they seem to be just taking in all of this water and it's not overflowing into the ocean and it's not going anywhere so it's just disappearing into those cups and so this represents, on a more stranger and negative term in one way, that we are no longer content to allow it to overflow and it is simply being collected and pulled up. And of course if water in reality stays like that it becomes stagnant and so that could mean a stagnation of the emotional mind or a stagnation of our journey throughout the universe, we're no longer flowing outwards into the world as we should be. We're just pooling up all of this uh, physical manifestation around us, of which is the so-called luxury of which the card speaks of. And so when Crowley describes in the Book of Thoth this card as being a number four, as a dead stop, a blind alley, an idea of totally different order is necessary to carry on throughout the series of which he means the series of the cup suite and indeed the entire fool's journey throughout the universe we need to look at things differently in order to move out of this state and so it could be that the four here as well represents a type of maturity and a type of yearning for a stability uh, of which will stop us from going wild so to speak into the universe and it can also be something of which we see in my opinion misinterpreted in a lot of new thought material in that uh, they tell us that we can strive for this world without any contrast this world where everything uh, is always going to be in that white light uh, of kether and there will be no contrast there will be no sadness to counterpart the joy and yet of course we can't have desire without contrast we can't want to accumulate those things around as if they're just there anyway if we can just click our fingers and everything appears in front of us without us needing to go through that process of manifestation we wouldn't actually appreciate them when they were there and so we do need to have contrast which doesn't need to be looked at negatively it can simply be that we need to look at the world as for what it is of which is an endless flow of new experience and so when you pick up this card perhaps it's showing that there is a boredom or a stagnation in some point or some area 
of our life, we're just not motivated to move on, and that the things of the earth in general, the physical world, are in their nature temporary. They cannot be stored up forever because they will change in some way. Even if they simply change, that they don't mean anything to us anymore, because our new experience that we have found on our journey through the universe has overtaken them or given them a new perspective. And so we should stop looking to the temporary and surface level pleasures of which will keep us stuck into that very stagnated atmosphere. We have to appreciate that the things of which we have, which very much can be physical things as well, again, you know, it's important not to throw the baby out with the bathwater and um, say that you don't want any physical possessions or anything because you're just doing the same thing, which is tipping the scales too far to one side. You might have a physical object which has no actual value. It may even be all battered and dirty, and yet to us it means the world. It means more than silver and gold. And that's because it means something to our very heart and our very soul. It's not the physical object, but it's its meaning behind it. And so we go for those things instead, and we appreciate those things. And that will open up new doors of perspective and of appreciation of the things of the world, and enable us to come out of rough and choppy seas, and to move on with our journey into the higher self and of the inner wisdom without allowing our energy to pool up and stagnate.